Hello and welcome to episode 32 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite show with Brad Nelson and internationally recognised and world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Lindicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, a cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, David and I are talking about the global healthcare cloud computing market is expected to exceed more than 11 billion US dollars by 2022 and will grow at a compound annual growth rate of more than 20% in the given forecast period. Make sure you stay until the end to get David's top three healthcare cloud tips for the sea levels. That's a bit of a mouthful. Hi, Dave. It's great to see you on the C-Suite show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here as well, man. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. It's kind of a tongue twister, huh? It certainly is. It certainly is. There's no flies on you today, Dave, is there? That's for sure. I'm not even going to. I'm not even going to begin to repeat what you just said. Um, but, <laughs> but anyway, moving on, Dave. The, the question for the opening question for the show is: What are the advantages that healthcare is looking for in the cloud? Yeah, I mean, healthcare is kind of weird uh, in terms of their adoption of cloud. I mean, they're pushing back for years, and I was working with lots of healthcare organizations and you know, doing a lot of planning engagements, things like that. And the reality is that they probably have more to gain in manufacturing and retail and, uh, you know, some of the other verticals out there. And the reality is that the, the ability to combine data, get into AI-based systems, you know, clinical, you know, clinician-based systems to spot issues with drug interactions, all these sorts of things, exist in tactical kind of hospital-level software, uh, you know, fiefdoms, you know, that exist in some of these systems, but as far as a wide deployment in the cloud computing market, they pretty much haven't taken advantage of it. There's some pockets of cloud adoption, and we're seeing as this thing kind of, you know, bears out, you know, some existing growth in the system, but the reality is, you know, $11 billion by 2022 is still not enough growth to make, I think, the impact that needs to be made within healthcare organizations. And anybody who goes to a UA-based hospital and, you know, has to get treatment, I'm just always taken back by the fact that, uh, you know, they don't share information as readily as they should. There's uh, not a way to double check diagnostics, not a way to double check drug interactions, not a way to check medical histories, you know, things like that. And the reality is that cloud computing will bring an economy into those systems that the healthcare system hasn't seen yet. So it's not a matter of they're not desirous of moving into these advanced technologies like machine learning and deep learning and predictive analytics and clinical systems, you know, processing and things like that. And IoT with, you know, people wearable devices, you know, uh, all the instability to spot things, things we've talked about on the show before. Uh, they just don't have the money to do it um, because it's a very, you know, penny pinching kind of a vertical. And the reality is that now if they move into cloud, they will have the money to do it because we're able to do this stuff at 50% uh, at a discount of 50% at least for moving to these various systems, also centralization of the systems, built-in security, built-in HIPAA compliance, you know, built-in European HIPAA compliance, all these sorts of things are really there for the picking. And you have AWS with, with uh, you know, cloud-based verticals that are focused specifically on healthcare, hospital-based systems, things like that, the cloudification of some of these clin clinician systems that are out there. I mean, it's just really just a, the biggest opportunity for them to improve their processing within these clinics and within these hospitals and within these specialized care units become much better at doing what they're doing. That doesn't mean that healthcare care is not, uh, you know, uh, amazing at what they do right now, but they can just be head and shoulders better in the fact that we're moving some of the latency between the ability for the physicians to deliver great care to the patients and the patients to accept the care. And, and I think that the, there's a process limitation right now, there's a technology limitation right now that's frustrating to me as a, te as a technologist. I, I just, when I go into hospitals and uh, clinics, you know, and I get uh, medical care, I just, you know, I just get, I, I wanna grab the guy and say, listen, look, you could do this a ton better and here's how to do it. You know, what, and of course the doctor has nothing to do with it, but the, you know, hospital administration, the people own those systems think, and this is big business. It's growing by leaps and bounds. Um, we're going to have a lot more of it happen as the as population in the United States and worldwide gets older. So we might as well figure this out in the next couple of years. What do you think? Yeah, I really do. And, and it, you, you, we, you've raised some really interesting points. And I think it, it just it baffles me that the healthcare isn't a market that's embracing cloud more, and that there isn't enough going on with 
you know, the Internet of Things, like we say, wearable devices, people being able to, you know, scan themselves for, you know, doing diabetes checks that can be sent straight to their doctors, all these reports that can be done via apps on smartphones, etc., that the healthcare market isn't embracing cloud. So, you know, it'd be interesting to see your point of view, Dave, with regards to if you had that sort of uh, cloud computing magic wand, uh, and, and budget was no, you know, money was no uh, issue with regards to what, what would uh, need to be done. What, what solution would you offer? I think the biggest one is a predictive, is a predictive analytics to support diagnostics of patients because, um, you know, we all get diagnosed by doctors, you know, whether it's poison ivy or, you know, diabetes or heart disease. And, and the reality is it would be great if that diagnostic was checked against, you know, million other diagnostics uh, in terms of what the outcome was and the best path for treatment. Because I'm relying on the smarts of the doctor and his ability to keep up or her ability to keep up, you know, provide the correct treatment for whatever I have as a disease or some kind of a condition, things like that. And I would rather rely on some sort of an artificial intelligence centralized database that has the knowledge of 10,000 physicians. Of, you know, that are experts in their field and will tell me the, the uh, uh, likelihood that I can be cured doing this kind of treatment or this kind of treatment and having options and basically things in way we're, which we're going. In reality, you have to depend on one human or two humans or a specialist to really kind of tell us what to do. And the reality, if they, we can combine the knowledge into a single location and be able to dole it out to the people who have to deliver the treatment, you know, we'll be much better off. And the other thing is, I never get this. I, I, I filling out those pieces of paper, those HIPAA forms in the doctor's office. I mean, come on. I mean, uh, why can't I do it one time in some centralized database and give them my social security number or give them my patient ID number or whatever? You know, have them do a retina scan or something and have that information kind of downloaded. You got to remember all these medications you're taking and things like that. And you know, it's just impossible to keep track of that. And I think people are making mistakes based on the information systems, not really going the extra mile to deal with the needs of the patient. And the reality is if they do that, they're gonna be able to provide much better care because they think mistakes are being made because the patients are providing inadequate information you know, to the doctors. It'd be nice if you could see everything that occurred. You know, where these Fitbits have those information systems uploaded, uh, you know, there's uh, blood pressure machines hooked up to your, your phone, the ability to take that, blood gases, things like that and have doctors rely on information that occurs over a long period of time versus just an instance of time. You know, I go into the doctor's office, they take blood, they take, they do a, a blood pressure check, all as well, but the reality is, is that over time, I could have an issue that's not gonna be spotted because it's chronic and it doesn't exist in that instance of time when I'm in the doctor's office. So all these things really kind of exist, and I don't have a medical degree, so I really can't comment on on, on the importance of those things, but I can comment as a patient in the fact that they can be much more automated, they can be much better at delivering care to the, uh, to the patients, and I can tell them how to do it. So, uh, you know, let's, let's get with it, guys. Yeah, 100%, get in touch with Dave. I'm gonna put his Twitter handle down there. We need, to t we need to tweet Dave and anyone in the medical profession that wants to chat with Dave. And, uh, will, and uh, Dave will help do all the consultations and I'll help you know, get all the tech people in. There's a, there's a perfect storm there somewhere, isn't there, Dave? <laughs> yeah, I can, I, can see the, I can see the tweets now. You idiot, where did you get your medical degree? That's, uh, that's usually where they start off. Where did you get your medical degree and why don't I get a haircut? I think they're the, they're the standard ones we're looking for. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they're the standard ones. But funny enough, we're, we're talking about a topic that actually uh, featured on uh, the uh, cloud computing news that I do uh, a couple of weeks ago. Actually, there's a company, an artificial intelligence company called Babylon, and uh, they have recently uh, they've got a chat bot that is like a cyber doctor. And it was recently put through um, some tests that the, um, the, the human general practitioners do and actually scored higher than general practitioners, which was uh, quite phenomenal. I think uh, if the if my sort of stats are um, clear, it was. I think they scored 81% uh, of the test, and a human doctor scores 72%. So it's, uh, it's pretty phenomenal what, what's going on. And that was actually set by the British Royal College of uh, General Practitioners. So um, I think the company Babylon, they're working with the NHS to develop this because they, they do consider it the future. So, you know, you're on the money there, Dave. So are we going to say, Alexa, am I dying? <laughs> yes. Go Google, have I still got a pulse? <laughs>
Yeah, I think that I think that's uh, I think chatbots are cool, but it's just interacting with better with better technology. That's what's delivering the results. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're laughing about it now, but you know, in in a couple of years' time, five years' time now, you know, there there will be a dependency on that. There will be a dependency on you know the Google Home set up for people that aren't able to you know communicate with anyone or live on their own. And you know, I don't know. It's just one of those things, isn't it? It's getting crazy. And, and look, let's hope it's getting it's getting better technologically wise for the interest of the patient and for the people. And it's not something that can be hacked too easily and and is too intrusive into people's privacy. No, I, I think it's all good tools. And the reality is the more we can put in the homes uh, closer to the people who need it, the, the better off we're going to be. I don't care if it's a chat bot or a phone or, or uh, you know, some sort of an IoT device, a wearable device that we wear. That we got to get better at this. Yeah, 100%. Well, it leads us on nicely, Dave, to your top three healthcare cloud tips. If you'd like to share those with us, that'd be great. Yeah, the first one is keep an eye on compliance, such as HIPAA, because uh, that'll get you in trouble. So. The reality is that we're moving information systems into the cloud and that uh, one of the reasons that they uh, people cited as the reason they don't want to move healthcare systems into the cloud is because of HIPAA and PII, personally identifiable information. And then now that they're moving things in the cloud, there's, they're not paying as much attention on compliance when that's what they were complaining about 10 years ago. So I'm telling you right now that the, you can do HIPAA-based systems and the clouds are prepared to do it. Uh, but you have to look at those systems and figure out how to interact with them and put them into your planning in terms of how you're going to deal with your data. So the compliance systems are there to maintain compliancy and PII information, and they're a lot better than some of the on-premise systems you have. But you got to turn them on. You have to learn how to use them. Uh, data rules of the day. I, I think that the combination, the, cult, the ability to keep data tracking systems you know, uh, over a long period of time and keep historical data in, cur- in terms of diagnostics and diagnosis and outcomes is, is critical uh, to us being successful at healthcare. Um, and hospitals and healthcare organizations have been reluctant to do this because it also keeps track of death rates and things like that. And they don't want to know how many people are dying in a particular hospital and, you know, whether they should accept patients that are higher risk and things like that. However, I think anonymized data should be collected centrally within all healthcare organizations and even within the countries where the healthcare organizations exist. And I think the government should get involved in making sure those things happen because it doesn't seem to be happening fast enough. Uh, don't be afraid of trying new things. Uh, so we talked about chatbots and we you know, talked about wearable devices and things like that. Healthcare seems to get into those systems way after everybody else. And so while they should be leading the charge in terms of wearable devices and healthcare at home and telemedicine, things like that, they're, they're dragged into it based on need, based on demand of the users that are there. The reality is that they should be offering these things proactively in the market, leveraging cloud computing as the equalizer there. There are great three top tips there, Dave. Thanks for that. And thanks for being part of the uh, C-Suite show this week. Always a pleasure, man. Stay well. Absolutely. And to you, sir. And to you. And thanks for watching, everyone. We hope you enjoyed watching this week's C-Suite show. Remember to like, subscribe and comment to the channel so you don't miss out on future videos. And there's a little notification bell that you might want to click as well. Uh, so you'll know every week when we upload the new shows and the uh, latest cloud computing news. David's on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. There is some blue graphics now, newly designed and on the screen at this moment in time. So you can see the actual Twitter handles. Wow. We're moving with technology, aren't we? <laughs> um, and look, also, you know, share these videos with your friends and with your colleagues. We hope you enjoyed watching it and look forward to uh, seeing what happens next week.